We're here today at uh, Kane University, uh, three-man camp, 4th of July, and uh, we're talking about the force play slide rule. And what we're going to do here quickly is read through the force play slide rule, and Brian, one of our instructors, as well as the guys here, are going to show exactly what the violations are and what they look like so that we kind of have an idea in our mind of what we're looking for, um, because reading it out of a text is a lot different than actually seeing what the picture is. On a force play, the runner must slide on the ground before the base and in a direct line between the two bases, okay? The width of the base, his entire body is basically within that width of the base. Obviously, it might go off either side if he's a little bit wider, but in terms of his slide, it's directly into the base. We're not sliding on any kind of angle. In, in here or finishing anywhere to the side. Now, permissible, two things here when he does slide into the base. He can pop. So he can pop up and as long as it's a natural popping motion, no kind of arm thrusts or anything like that, that's permissible, okay? The second thing he can do is his momentum can carry him through the base on the ground, okay? So turf field obviously, you know, if he slides a little bit later, which is still in a legal fashion, he might wind up through the base, which is still legal. Again, the idea being that the area between the bases belongs to the runner, the area on either side of the base belongs to the fielder. So even though he goes through, the runner's protected area to the left or to the right isn't interfered with. In terms of the legality of this slide, if he's legal and there is contact, that is not an infraction. Okay, so if, if the shortstop or second baseman clears this area late, he slides legally right into the base or happens to go through the base, that's still good, okay? Now, the violations. Actions by, the, by a runner are illegal and interference shall be called if the runner slides or runs out of the baseline in the direction of the fielder and alters the play of the fielder, okay? Sorry, Danny. Very clearly, our fielder is behind, and he has a runner sliding outside of the legal pathway into his, into his way, okay? The runner uses a rolling or cross body slide and either makes contact with or alters the play. Okay, so very simply, he hasn't really chosen to slide head first or feet first here. His body's up, he's on his side, and he's making contact, and usually you're gonna see it like that a little on the higher side, okay? He's not flush with the ground. Runner's raised legs makes contact higher than the fielder's knee, okay? Okay, so this is making contact higher than the knee. So, based, so in some instances, I would say it's a little unlikely, but in some instances, a slider's leg gets a little high. So this is a pretty, this is a good slide until he gets too high, okay? There's not necessarily anything malicious here. A leg could get that high. The second piece of this is a slash or a kick, and that doesn't necessarily have to be above the knee. If he decides to make an intentional or overt action to hurt the guy, now you're in the area of a force play slide rule violation as well as a malicious contact type ejection. Okay, so the difference being the raised leg getting above the knee incidentally or intentional versus if it's below the knee and he kicks or above the knee and he kicks, we still have interference. This is more of an intentional act. The last one here is one that's kind of come up this year. So in terms of what a runner can legally do, so he can slide away from a play, so if the play is behind and he slides outside over here, that's good, okay? He's made, he's made an attempt to get out of the way. Now, we get into a little bit more complicated situation when he stands up, okay? Comes behind. Okay, so what do we have here? Why? the defender's progress or ability to throw the ball. So the first part of that rule is 
the runner must slide or if he stands up, he must veer away. So if he decides to stand up and come right through the base, that's a violation, okay? Now, if he stands up and veers away, that's okay. Now, if he stands up and veers toward, what's that? Violation. Violation. Okay, now, the thing that can happen here and the thing that we somehow for some reason started to see happen this year is the guy veers and that's the side that the guy winds up on. So, like the yeah, so the, so the timing of a guy coming across, this guy reads it differently, okay? And he kind of backs out that way. So it's your judgment. Like that play right there, that is not interference. I mean, he veered completely out of the way. Was he on the same side? Absolutely, but God, he was all the way out there. So just have to keep those things in mind. Then obviously on the standing up piece, there's some intentional things he can do that we're not gonna allow. Flailing arms at a guy, you know, making it look like he's lowering his shoulder to truck him over, like anything like that we're gonna call right away. Those are all intentional acts that, are, that should be disallowed. What is the penalty for a force play slide rule? Out. He's out, the backside side runner's out. out. Okay. Automatic double play. So we have this runner out, we have the backside runner out. Can we have the force play slide rule at third base? Yeah. Can we have it at the plate? Yeah. Okay. When we get into a position here to take a double play, and again, we're talking about a ground ball to the left side to the shortstop. Okay, there was a, a line of thinking maybe, I don't know how long ago, but that you got as far as you possibly could or as far as the play would allow to see that transfer. Well, in college baseball, we have to really worry about this slide. So what we're gonna do is split the difference between our best look at the transfer and our best look at the slide. Okay, so where does that take us? It takes us somewhere to the midpoint between. So over here would be the best look for the transfer and obviously more towards over here on a play like that would give us a better look at the slide. So we're just gonna split the difference. So when Donnie's the, our third base umpire in the middle, uh, he's gonna step up, turn and face the ball at the shortstop. He's gonna work his way to the midpoint. He's gonna get set, I'm gonna flip. Okay, so now we wanna make sure we take our time on this side as the third base umpire, let the play happen, let the slide occur, really take your time. There's no reason for any of us to be looking at first base. There's really nothing going on there for us on that backside, okay? Um, we're gonna try to mix in a bunch of different uh, interferences. So Donnie's gonna demo one interference here, just the mechanics of it. Ground ball to the shortstop, step up, turn, face the ball, works with the midpoint, flip. Time, time, that's interference. You, you're out. You, you're out. Okay. Another showcase play like Brian talked about with the batter interference. Got everybody looking at you. Call, make the call here, get big, make the call on the back end. Are there gonna be instances where maybe our first base umpire doesn't hear it? It's gonna happen. Whatever we have to do to clean it up to make sure everybody knows we do it. Sometimes there's a lot of people yelling. You can only yell so loud. Get a beard. He's out. You're out. Ken, what do you do? Flip to the right. Okay, to the right. Is the sliding to the right make it illegal? Uh, he's got to go right. Go right the baseline. So he's he's right. He's got to go right in the baseline. But sliding to the right doesn't make it illegal. Just like sliding to the left. He slid in the direction of the fielder. Balls hit. Nine. That's interference. You're out. He's out. Guys, so that, that was a really interesting one because that slide and that play is going to cause probably a fight. Okay, so keep in mind when you have an interference like that, you came up and called it, pointing to first base and calling the batter runner out might not be your next biggest priority. Okay, ball's hit. Guys, does 
does the, does the middle infielder have to make a return throw to first base for there to be interference? No. Okay. Ball's hit. God. That's interference. Front of your route. Go route. Guys. I'm glad you called that. Guys, just keep in mind, when somebody tries to do something overt and intentional and illegal, whether they actually make contact or not, we're gonna call it. So to me, that was more of a situation where he did something completely illegal, maybe hindered him some, but you know, it's the same concept as if you're in a rundown and a guy starts swatting at the ball. You know, maybe he doesn't make contact, but if he does something that intentional, that overt, we're gonna go ahead and call the interference. He's out. Guys, we didn't really show this one. Everyone kind of take a step in. We're seeing this more and more. And that is these extremely intelligent student athletes have figured out that a lot of times if their foot winds up right here, they're going to get umpires to pass on interference. But look at what Brian's going to do here and his foot's going to wind up right where I am. Is that legal? No. Has he slid directly into the base between the bases? No. Okay. So that's one to definitely watch for because we're seeing more and more. I think uh, I think we had a video on on one of the video reviews like that um, from from one of the other groups. I think down at uh, TCU, and a kid, you know, slid came in very wide and then slid its foot wound up right in the right place, but the, the shortstop or second baseman was behind the bag and the umpire properly called interference. And for that umpire's good luck, his supervisor was standing about right behind the first base coach's box and thought it was the greatest thing on the earth. In this situation, we have the transfer and the slide basically in the same spot. Now, obviously we can't stand right here because we've got a runner coming in, we've got a throw coming right through us. So we're, this is where it really becomes important to step up, turn, and face the ball. Because if our starting position is back here and we just turn, we've got a problem. Okay, so it's step up, turn, face the ball. And now you're going to find, I call it the midpoint to the midpoint. So on this side, we're in the midpoint. On this side, we're in the midpoint of basically this, this 90 degree angle. So guys, see, this is a first and second look, okay? So everything changes a lot because now we start a lot further away from second base than we would if we were, if we were in the B position, correct? So first and second, double play. Okay, so the biggest thing here again is step up, turn, and face the ball. So I'm gonna walk you through it. So ground ball to second base. Carl, it's, you're the guy. Step up, turn, face the ball. Okay, now our body language is, is showing us that he's going to second base, right? Okay, so I'm gonna step up probably as much as the play allows, but that's probably it right there. And now I'm really gonna just lock down on the play. Okay, same responsibilities, right? Same responsibilities. Okay, the only thing that's different is what? Distance. Distance. Yeah. What's the difference now? What do I have going on at third base? possible runner right r2 is going to third base right. okay so same amount of time take your time with the slide take your time with everything but just remember you got a guy at third base okay bounce back balls hit Yeah. You're out. You. Back here. Ball's hit. He's out. He's out for interference. He's out for interference. You go back to second. <laughs> You're out. You're out. You're Mike Aranzulo, go in there and show him how to do the mechanic properly. And this could be three in a row. The play's not going to happen. Just, just what you're supposed to do. Time and go. He's out. You, back to third base. 
That's okay. Really good job with that. Um, I think, I hope that that gives you guys a little bit better look. We're always trying to think about ways to give our umpires who are working directly, who may be able to watch a video. Also, one of the things we're trying to figure out is how to try to explain this rule to coaches in a better way. And we're hoping that for those guys that this provides a little bit of a look as to, to what things may be legal and illegal. And anytime we can kind of get on the same page as the coaches, and everybody has an understanding, that's probably gonna help us have a little bit more consistent officiating and, and everyone involved just has a better idea of what's going on. So we're hoping to use this video in that way.